bright duty every student matters to dear students welcome to another lecture in this class we are going to begin with unit 13 of class 12 education nagaland board which is individual differences now in this chapter we are going to learn about the meaning of individual differences what are the different areas of individual differences the causes that lead to differences in the individuals how can individual differences be of educational significance and also learn about the special children the set the differently abled children now as the term individual difference must have guided us of the fact every individual is different okay according to plato who stated this 2000 years ago no two people can be same no two people can be born exactly the same everybody has some or the other difference some differences are because of their natural uh, you know what they have inherited uh, naturally some differences are on the basis of their learning some differences are on the basis of how they have grown as well as develop and that is the reason why no two people you know or rather every person has a specialization in a different occupation one may be suitable for one and the other may be suitable for the other so every person has different emotions and different ways of expressing their emotions like love anger fear then the feeling of pleasure pain everything every person wants independence every person wants to be successful and every person wants to be accepted these are just the general uh, you know requirements by all the people but despite the requirements which are general in nature we can still not state that two people are the same that two people are alike every individual is different from one another and that can be observed in various aspects even if the children who are born as twins they might look same to some extent but their behavioral pattern their intelligence level is going to be different for sure and therefore it is very important part of psychology which talks about the study of the individual differences now individuals can be differentiated from one another on the basis of their gestures how do they react in some situation how do they talk to people how do they act how do they walk how do they look how do they behave and so on and so forth apart from things that can be seen and observed the people are different on the basis of their intellectual abilities also their cognitive skills are different how mentally smart they are is going to be different so the difference or rather the problem of individual differences can be studied from two different aspects first difference in the abilities from individual to individual the differences that exist from between one person and the other person as well as the difference in the abilities within the same individual a person who can maybe very quick and smart when it comes to the subject mathematics can be very dull and lethargic when it comes to hindi so within the same person there are differences and differences can obviously be seen between two people as well now let us discuss the various definitions of it, uh, individual differences so according to the dictionary of education individual differences stand for the variation or the deviation among the individuals with regard to a single characteristic or number of characteristics 
so those differences that stand uh, you know uh, or those differences that exist in the people on the basis of differences again that can be compared from person to person or within the person that can be seen it stands for those differences which in totality distinguish one from the other so those factors those features which will distinguish you which will separate you from one person to the other so we can say that the individual differences means those differences among the human beings that separate them from the others and make them a unique individual with unique qualities with unique characteristics another definition that we have is according to osborn according to osborn individual differences means the dissimilarity between persons that obviously separate them from one and the other according to carter be good variation or the deviation among individuals in regard to single characteristics or a number of characteristics so the differences can exist not only on the basis of one characteristic but multiple characteristics as well so now let us talk about the broad classification of how the individual differences can be categorized we can classify individual differences on the basis of their inherited traits those traits those qualities that they have inherited from their parents and those traits and qualities that they have acquired that they have got after a rigorous learning process so your individual differences may arrive either out of what you have inherited or what you have acquired inherited individual differences are due can be physical can be mental and can be temperamental that is on the basis of your behavior how you react in a particular situation and the acquired individual differences can be social can be cultural they can be educational as well as emotional okay so these are the two broad categories in which we can uh, you know differentiate or categorize the individual differences now let us look at the causes of the individual difference in detail so we have learned the broad categories now let us look into these categories at length heredity heredity obviously we all know that every individual has some abilities has some things that are provided to them from by the heredity that they have inherited that they have got from their parents or they have got from their ancestors and these heredity qualities are going to decide what path of progress they are going to take how much they are going to develop as an individual not only is it going to add to your path of progress but at times your heredity you know your uh, qualities or the features that you have inherited can also put a limitation can also act as a blockage on one's growth and development with respect to your intelligence level your specific abilities you know your height your weight and everything is in consideration there are some hereditary factors you know which as i told you like height weight size shape color nose hands legs everything all such things are determined by your heritical qualities apart from the growth your intellectual you know development how smart you are here that also plays a great great role on what you have inherited from your ancestors so your heredity plays a very vital role not only for your growth but also for your development the next we have the environmental factors 
Now, environment plays a very important role in the differences that can be seen between individuals. You know, no person uh, who is born or who dies has the same environment. People are born in different environments and they die in different environments as well. This environment brings you know, it brings in the changes such as your behavior. This impact what activities you involve yourself into. Your attitude is impacted by your environment. The kind of lifestyle that you lead, that is also impacted by your environment. Your personality is impacted by your environment. So, environment does not only mean what physical or the external factors that influence your overall growth and development, but also the people you are surrounded with, with the society that you live in, the culture that you follow, the traditions that you follow, the ideas, the notions, the opinions that you have within yourself. Also, these differences with respect to environment can also be because of what lies within the family. Apart from the external features of society and people, within the family, how are they brought up? What kind of a peer group do they have? What is the economic status of the parents? What kind of education they are imparted with? That also impacts your differences. So, nature plays a greater role, but there is a def, you know, a debate which often takes place between the psychologists where they are confused whether it is nature or nurture that plays a greater role in the development of the children, whether it is the external factors or the internal factors that is within the family that has a greater impact on the individual development of the child. But whatsoever may have a greater impact, both of them play a good role in bringing about differences in the children's personalities. Next is race and nationality. You know, race and nationality, what race do you belong to, what nation, what country were you born in also has an impact over your personality. You know, Indian, Chinese, Americans, everybody will have some or the difference in their characters, their personalities because of the culture that they are born with. Next, we have the difference according to sex. Now, obviously, the development of the boys and girls, there is a difference in their development. The physical development, if I talk about the girls, that takes place a year or two earlier than the boys. So, the girls start to develop physically one or two years earlier than the boys. Between the age of 11 and 14 years, the girls become tall and heavy than the boys. And after 15, the boys suddenly pick up and their physical development leaves behind that of the girls. Again, girls are more kind, they are affectionate, sympathetic and tender, while the boys are considered to be brave and hard and, you know, efficient and competent. So, this difference also can be seen in the people on the basis of the sex, their gender. It is believed that men are enduring while the women always have a superiority over men in terms of intelligence, language, memory and the cultural aspect. So though gradually this difference is getting eliminated on the basis of gender of the people, but still somewhere down the line there are a lot of people who bring out these differences very deliberately. Now next difference that can be seen in the individual is because of the age. Age is another factor which is responsible, you know, for bringing out the individual differences. Learning takes place, as we have read this earlier also, 
learning takes place quicker at an early age as compared to ones when you have grown up okay so at an early age you are able to learn new things when you grow up you learn to get a better control over your emotions your anger you understand your responsibilities and you take a step ahead towards an overall development of your personality when a child becomes mature you know as we have learned maturity and development go hand in hand if you are getting mature you are developing in, with respect to your personality as well next and the last thing that defines your differences is your education it is the most important reason, reason that defines the difference you know between two individuals the kind of education that is provided to the people is actually the most important characteristic that will separate them that will define them human beings who are able to have a good control over their emotions and are better intellectually and mentally are those who have by the virtue of being for born in a good family been exposed to good education so education not only brings about a change in your personality but also your behavior your mindset your attitude the way you talk to people the way you appreciate things around you on the other hand an uneducated person lacks in such things because obviously they are not guided by anything related to education but they are guided by something that is within them okay so these were the reasons or these were the factors that cause a difference in the individual's personalities now we know how the individual differences exist let us look into the educational implications how can these individual differences impact the education of a child now classroom is a place where differences should not be allowed and if they are there they need to be handled with care and comfort so we know that education aims uh you know at providing the best possible uh skills and aptitude to the children the way you teach them the kind of curriculum that you plan everything aims that the individual differences which are there in the people they should be considered and keeping in mind the differences that exist in the people the entire curriculum or the methodology or the teaching aid should be used next again as i said the curriculum should be designed in such a manner that the interest level the ability the aptitude the needs of all the children in the class should be taken care of the teacher also is supposed to adapt a different teaching style so that the different learners can learn appropriately the co curricular activities play a very important role in this field drama music literary activities as we have learned in the previous chapter that was learning uh, sorry intelligence where gardiner gave the multiple intelligence theory so it can be the case that a child who is not good academically may be very good at dramatics or at dance or singing so these co curricular activities provide every child an opportunity to prove themselves better than the others so if one is not good academically the same person can still be confident because he or she knows that they have an upper hand in the other activities now the teaching aids that are used by the teacher should be such that the children of different capabilities and aptitude should be attracted towards them and they learn and develop an interest as for the same 
various methodologies such as the playway method lecture method project method experiential learning discovery method you know different different types of methodology needs to be adopted by the teacher because she knows that in her class exist children with different aptitudes then when you divide the students in your class you know for any activity or for any purpose for that matter you need to consider that the differences that division the categorization should not only be based on your mental ability or your age but also on the basis of your physical growth your social development skills your emotional quotient and everything should be considered when we talk about the vocational guidance you know the counselor also you know would want to guide the children keeping in mind the different requirements the different interests and the different attitudes and aptitudes of the children so my dear students i'm going to pause here now we know what is the diff meaning of individual differences and what are the causes behind it and how should individual differences be dealt educationally now in my next lecture i'm going to discuss about the areas in which the individual differences can be seen so i'm going to pause here and we'll see you all in the next lecture Thank you.